Welcome to the actor's side. Today, so excited we have Amy Adams here. And Amy's been nominated for every award under the sun this year. So it's <laughs> so exciting for Arrival and a terrific movie. And you're also great in Nocturnal Animals. You have two movies out at the same time in theaters. That must be fun for you. It's really fun, yeah. You, you never know sort of when you're making them how they're going to decide to release them. So it's interesting when they come out so close together, you know. This is all about acting, and I'm curious as to how you got into acting in the first place. It was like <laughs> dinner theater or Yeah, something? well, I couldn't, I was really bad at math, which is actually the truth, because I wanted yeah, to be a doctor, <laughs> and I couldn't pass chemistry. So I was like, well, <laughs> if I can't pass high school chemistry, I'm probably not going to make it through medical school. So, um, so I, I was a dancer at the time, and, and I've always been attracted to the arts and attracted to all of that, but I was a dancer and I started doing um, dinner theater. That's how I started, yeah. Wow, uh, how did you get into dinner theater? Because that sounds like fun to do, except I imagine it's kind of weird with people and People eating. don't eat while you're doing it. Oh, I okay. think, I think you know, everyone saw, um, what was it? What was the movie, was it so, what was it? The one with Kevin? Uh, Kevin Klein? Kevin Klein, oh, yeah, yeah, where he's yeah. doing Death of a Salesman. Yeah, soap yeah. dish, yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like eating while he's doing Death of right. a Salesman, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I think it can be like that. But the ones I worked at were, um, were very different. And, uh, you know, a friend of mine called me up. I was in Atlanta, and she said, you know, I'm working at this one place, and do you, I have to leave. Do you want to come down and do the role? They needed somebody who did ballet, sang, and tapped, and could say a couple lines. And I was like, yeah, I'll come fill in. So that sort of got me into the Denver theater scene. And through that, people would let each other know about auditions. So Denver is a surprisingly vibrant theater scene. Especially now. I mean, it's come yeah. up. Both the cities that I worked in, um, Denver and Minneapolis, St. Paul, oh, yeah. have a real vibrant, um, beautiful theater scene and a wonderful, supportive community. So it was a great place to sort of learn about myself. Um, That's great because yeah. you grew up in Colorado after yeah. moving around for the first few years. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so you were right there yeah. to sort of jump in. With yeah, I jumped in and I got to work at this. My first uh, dinner theater was a Boulder Dinner Theater doing, um, doing a chorus line. Oh, really? So it was so yeah. much fun, yeah. What did you play in a chorus line? I played Christine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So That's it, fun. Was, it was really, really fun. Um, but we did have to wait tables there, <laughs> which I'm really, really bad at. That challenge for an actor, knowing the way movies are made, in both these films, Arrival and Nocturnal Animals, they're not linear no. uh, stories. They're not told that way, I, you know, and so, and I don't think they're probably shot that way no. either. No, no, not typically. Uh, so how do you keep track of where you are in any given thing, you know, when you're making a, movies like that? I think that's where the preparation comes in for me. I mean, everybody does it different, but for me, knowing uh, the bigger picture, going in or, or having an understanding of, of um, sort of what, where each scene or each moment, how it all adds up to the larger story, that's really helpful. But it asks a lot of the audience too, and we've been really fortunate that, that um, the audiences have, have sort of gone along with this nonlinear way of storytelling. I think that's a credit to the editors and the directors and the, uh, the uh, composers, you know, yeah. because you rely so much on that to help connect uh, the nonlinear. Do you work with your directors? I mean, um, I, I remember talking to you recently and with Denis yeah. Villeneuve. Denis. <laughs> also, I call him Dennis Villanueva, but I'm as a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah, Denis, but you, had, uh, you, you, you wanted to share a lot of your thoughts about the character with him, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, um, I, you, you, you need to stop talking, not because I don't value what you say, but I, yeah, you're talking too fast. <laughs> I cannot understand you. <laughs> I did. I think uh, a lot of times I realize I talk to my director because I just need to talk it out, right. you know, but usually by the time I'm finished talking, I've answered it myself. I'm sure it's a very, it's an exercise in frustration on their <laughs> part because they're like, is there a question at the end of this or do I just have to, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I, love, I love working with the, the, this whole team of people creatively and to see what everybody brings to it, you know? Yeah, like Tom Ford, this is only his second film, Nocturnal Animals. Yeah. And, you know, of course, he's known for the fashion world and things. He's a hell of a director, right? He think. is. He really is. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping maybe by his third film, people will stop being surprised, you know? Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, for his sake. I mean, I, I love the idea of continuing, least, you know, that he can continue to surprise people. But I wasn't surprised at all. It's funny. I. I I know him as a designer, of course, you know, but I didn't know a lot about him as a designer, about his 
personal story, like his backstory that led him. Yeah. And it wasn't, I made an effort not to find out until after. And it was fascinating because I, I really just thought of him as my director. And That's then I was like, you totally reinvented Gucci. And then I was telling him all his accomplishments. He's like, OK. Um, yeah, after I went and did research on him. Afterwards. Afterwards, yeah. like, like a month ago. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I know. It's so uh, I, I had sort of, I loved getting to know him as a director. Um, I never really knew him as a fashion, not, not personally. I looked at some of your early credits. My favorite title is Psycho Beach Party. Fantastic. Charles yeah. Bush. That was yeah. actually a very funny movie and yeah. kind of a cult movie. Now, yeah, absolutely. People have discovered. <laughs> it's a great one. Um, yeah, Lauren Ambrose is so fantastic in it. Yeah. Uh, I, I was so impressed working with her. I would watch her and just be like, oh my gosh, she's so amazing. <laughs> How did you get uh, uh, those first movie jobs. Did you move to LA? What happened? Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. I, well, my first one, I, I was working at um, Chan House and Dinner Theater in Minnesota, and they were auditioning local girls to be in Drop Dead Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, and I went in just on sort of a, everyone was going in, so we're all like, okay, let's go in. I had an agency there that would send me on sort of um, industrial and commercial auditions, and uh, so I just auditioned. I got to say, the first time I just focused on Amy Adams was in a, a movie I love. It's one of my favorite Spielberg movies, Catch Me If You Can. It's just so fun and things. But that was a huge break for you. That was a huge break for me. Yeah. It's funny. I, I was on a phone call with my dad, and he was trying to be encouraging. But he was like, you know, Amy, you've always had to work really hard for things. And, and you know, it might just be one of these things that it takes you a while to find a place. and literally the other line beeped. I'm like, hold on, Dad. And they're like, Steven Spielberg wants to meet you. And I was like, <laughs> Dad, you're not going to believe this. I appreciate your, your, you know, your pseudo pep talk, but I'm uh, <laughs> going to meet Steven Spielberg. I've got Spielberg I've on got the other Spielberg line. I've got Spielberg on the other line. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really, um, I was so nervous, so nervous to meet him. Um, but, but it was a wonderful experience, and it really, um, yeah, it was, it was special. It was special for me. It was a wonderful. How do you deal with that? You know, going on those auditions, it, was it nerve-wracking for you to do that in general or just because it was Steven Spielberg? And well, I didn't read for Steven. Oh. Steven had seen the tape, oh. apparently. Uh, Debbie Zane, the casting director. Yeah. Casting directors are the unsung heroes. There really should be a casting Oscar. Um, One um, Lynn Stallmaster got one this year. Oh, yes, she did. An honorary yes, Oscar. Absolutely, but I think it should be a category. I mean, this is a really amazing thing, and she took my little tape and brought it to Stephen and said, I think I found Brenda. Yeah. And uh, so Stephen met me, and we just had a conversation. And the first Oscar nomination, so deserved, and yet kind of a surprise, because it was a very small movie, Junebug, yeah. Yeah. and it came out earlier in the year. Sony Classics got that tape out there early they did. on. I remember it was the first one sent. They did. And once people saw that performance, it was a foregone conclusion that you gotta, you got to be nominated. I mean, that was an extraordinary movie. Uh, Phil Morrison, who directed that, was, again, he's someone he, he really fought for me. They were looking for a name. He really fought for me. And uh, getting that changed so many things, um, not just career-wise, but personally, because I was at that point kind of considering not uh, maybe moving back to New York, maybe getting back into um, you know, musicals. I was having a really hard time finding, a, uh, finding my footing here still. Even after Catch Me, I had a, had a tricky period, you know? Is that right? And oh, yeah. That, that kind of frustrating period where you go like, am I, what am I doing? Or yeah, I, just, I, I think I just had a big crisis of confidence. I was trying to be something I wasn't, and I think it, it, Junebug just sort of shook me out of it, you know? So authentic and, and had such an impact, I think, particularly for women that went to see that. They must have come up to you and, and uh, yeah. talked about that role. Yeah, I've had, I've had a lot of women um, share their stories about having um, lost a child in childbirth. It's, it's been humbling. Yeah. It's very humbling. But it's, a, it's something great as an actor that you can have that kind of impact. I mean, it is. Where else can you do that yeah. like that? And a lot of it, it's, um, it's sort of this thing we don't talk about in our culture mm -hmm. is, um, you know, it's, it's a surprisingly common and we don't talk about it. Yeah. And so it's hard, I think. 
Do you feel you have to have some sort of connection to the character, some level of empathy with who you're playing before you can play it, or is there, what is that that, that makes these roles work for you? Um, I can usually tell, I can't talk myself into something. Do you know what I mean? If I read it and I can't find my way in, I'm never gonna find my way in. Hmm. Sort of, if, it, if I don't find my way in in the first read, um, I'm, I'm usually, I, I'm never gonna, I, I've made that mistake being like, oh, I can figure it out. Yeah. And then I struggle the whole time. So I really learned to listen to that voice that, that tells me um, that I know, I know where this um, character lives in me, you know. And you create a whole backstory for your characters too, you, beyond the script or maybe a book that it yeah. came from or something. Yeah, absolutely. It's important for me. I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about the research, like well, I'm playing a linguist in Arrival, and I, I love doing research, but I don't want to do so much research that I get in the way of the humanity of the character. Like, I'm not as smart as my character in Arrival. <laughs> I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. <laughs> but, um, but aside from that, she also has so much compassion and empathy, and she has such a complex internal life, and so I'm really interested to figure out um, who she is outside of being a linguist. What inspired her to be a linguist? What inspires her to um, have the bravery to take off her, you know, her suit? Like, what are, what are all of these things that, um, how, what, is the, what are all of the moments that led to who she is today? That's, that's exciting to me. Always great to see where, where your life and career goes, Amy thank Adams. You. Thank, thank you so you. much for coming out here today. So nice talking to you, always. You've always, thank you. Thank you.